to listen to the entire episode and catch all our content, look for Pod Academy in quotations on all podcasting platforms. Hi, and welcome to Pod Academy, an international podcast that combines pop culture and academics. We post a new episode every Monday. There is a school of historical thought that looks at history through the lens of the great men who shaped it. Today, we want to talk about one such man. But he is not just any great man. Far from it. He might be the greatest man of the great men our world has ever known. This man embodied the eternal conflict between the rich and the poor, as well as the eternal conflict between an established aristocracy and the masses. This man is the link between 500 years of Roman Republic and a thousand years of Roman Empire. He is a man of contradictions. His most memorable moment is his death. In the popular imagination, this man is a general, though he was first and foremost a politician. He is a man who climbed to the very top of the greatest power of antiquity by the sheer strength of his political skills, and then got outmaneuvered by his political rivals, who surprised him by literally stabbing him in the back and heart and throat. He is a man who inspired fanatical loyalty by his followers, and then got betrayed by one of his closest friends. He is a man who went to the most distant corners of the known world and then got shanked in his own town. He is a man who managed to turn his ambitious dreams into a reality but couldn't fathom that his cowardly enemies in the Senate, who couldn't beat him in the political arena or battlefield, that they could beat him with simple daggers hidden under their togas. Why, this is violence, he's supposed to have exclaimed when the first senator grabbed him by the toga. His assassination came days before he embarked on what could have been his greatest military achievement that would have made him into a living god. But then he got the brutal memo. Great men are mortal, just like any other kind of man. What further cements this man's place at the top of all of history is the manner of his death, which is, in my opinion, the single most dramatic historical event of all time. He was at the top of his game and had always had Lady Luck on his side. And then his luck ran out. He snatched victory from the jaws of defeat so many times, only to, at the very end, snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. This man has all the most compelling elements history has to offer, as well as all the most compelling elements drama has to offer. He is the stuff that great history and great drama are made of. This is Sparta! History in movies. I love the smell of napalm in the morning. Das war ein Befehl! Der Angriffsteuer war ein Befehl! What we do in life echoes in eternity. All right, but apart from the sanitation, the medicine, education, wine, public order, irrigation, roads, a fresh water system, and public health, what have the Romans ever done for us? Hi, everybody. Hello, Rutger. Hi, Gil. Ah, so Caesar, right? Oof. Yeah, so I guess he is a very, very great man because if 2,000 years down the line you still have a month named after you, the month of July, and a job named after you, the Caesar, the Kaiser, the Tsar, well, then you must have done something right. And I agree with you that he may have been the greatest man to have ever lived without actually being a good man. Mm -hmm. Was he a good man? I don't think so. He was an effective man. And what made him so effective was that he combined in himself a whole number of different qualities that normally we kind of see not so fully developed in the same person. And when I look at these qualities, I can only find very, very bad people to have had these. <laughs> okay. He was a very good orator, right? He could uh, inspire the masses. And when I think of orators of that kind, maybe I think of you know people screaming from a balcony and making weird hand gestures and maybe self-consciously training that as well, like a Hitler. He was also a very good writer, actually so much so that the uh, writings of Caesar, of his campaigns, where he talks about himself in the third person, these writings are still used as introductory Latin in uh, Latin class. Amazing. So he was a good writer. And so, for example, of these scary dictators, who else was a good writer? 
Hitler wasn't a very good writer. For example, Mein Kampf, although it is banned in other countries, maybe it wouldn't even have to be because it is said to be very, very boring and hard to get through and unreadable. And I'm not the only one saying this. Also, there's a good writer and effective politician who said that, namely Mussolini. He was a better writer, pretty good speaker, inventing all of the theatrics. But he wasn't such a great general right. and i guess he wasn't uh, a, the perfect politician because he ended up hanged by his feet from a gas station now one of these monsters who did uh, eventually die in bed uh, and was a good politician i guess must have been stalin except he was a terrible speaker stalin's voice was hardly ever heard by soviet citizens because he was embarrassed about it being maybe a little squeaky and also with a heavy georgian accent so he was actually like, he could write reasonably well, was a good politician, not a great speaker. Mm. And I guess the only person who really combines all of these things and comes uh, c- close to Caesar might have been Napoleon, Okay, let's say. Because in addition to all of these other qualities, both Napoleon and Caesar were also very good generals and uh, very effective administrators. And maybe some of these other people that I just mentioned are not. So really what makes Caesar unique is that there's so much of these different qualities combined in one person. So much so that, as we said, he's uh, been resonating in history more than anyone else for the last two millennia. For eight long years, he has gorged himself like a wolf on the blood of Gaul and thereby made himself monstrously rich. Why? Why does he ply the mob with races and fights and gaudy feasts? Why has he paid the debts? of every reprobate fool in this Senate House. I I tell you why he does these things. He wants to buy himself a crown. He wants to destroy the Republic and rule Rome as a bloody tyrant. So let's have a look at the life and times of this guy. And as usual, we're going to do it through movies and TV shows. And uh, learn a little bit. And we are going to do this actually because we are so impressed (laughs) by Caesar, (laughs) apparently. Uh, We're going to do this in two episodes. Why don't you introduce the first episode, Gil? So part one, we're going to start uh, from the early days. Not much known is uh, about his early years, uh, but uh, in his youth and later there's more stuff that we can know. And there is the, the TV movie show uh, on TNT, Caesar, from 2002, that depicts uh, that time. You have unfortunate ancestry. If you think it's unfortunate to be descended from the gods. <laughs> now, which god was that? The Julians are descended from Aeneas, who was... The son of Venus, ah, yes, 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 yes. There are many people these days who claim to be descended from gods. And we're going to end the episode after the Gallic Wars. So for that, Mm -hmm. we're going to use as well TNT's Caesar, but also Mm -hmm. Netflix's Masters of Rome, the second season. With the approval of the Senate, I hereby name you Julius Caesar, Consul of Rome. What's your name? Brutus. Any who oppose this bill oppose the good of Rome itself. Once you have power, it's very hard to let it go. It's called uh, the Roman Empire, the entire show. So we're going to only talk a little bit about the HBO Rome, because that's mostly going to be relevant for the next episode. Soldiers, Pompey and the Senate have formally declared that Gaius Julius Caesar is an enemy of Rome. They have declared that I am a criminal. They have declared, in effect, that all of you also are criminals. This is a dark day, and I stand at a fork in the road. I can abide the law and surrender my arms to the Senate and watch the Republic fall to tyranny and chaos. Or I can go home with my sword in my hand and run those maniacs to the Tarpian Rock! In the next episode, we're going to go through crossing the Rubicon, the civil wars, coming as somewhat of a king and getting stabbed 
all over the place. When I watched all these uh, Caesar depictions and, uh, and, and, you know, researching Caesar and all that, he is a hard person to pinpoint and depict, I think. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think I agree. And I think you can also kind of tell that this is the case because all these movies leave out uh, significant aspects of his personality, which yes. you then never really see uh, in action. So, for example, what I think is very interesting about his life is that he also took on the highest uh, religious jobs right. in the country. And you never see that. Yeah, you never see that. No, not mentioned at all. No. He was like, in addition to everything else, he was also the Pope. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's just weird. Each Caesar is different. Like the Netflix Caesar, they lean very heavily on him being like a soldier who became yeah. a general. Yeah. Yeah, too heavily. Too yeah. heavily. This is like fake news. And yeah. all his like uh, geopolitical uh, machinations, he's like getting pushed into them because I think, first of all, they miscast the actor. Mm -hmm. of Julius Caesar he de like he looks like Captain America like a superhero Captain America beautiful rugged doesn't look uh, wise or smart or you know cunning that's weird and the TNT Caesar leaned too heavily away <laughs> from all the soldiering they don't mention that he was a soldier like a good soldier and you don't understand from like how did he get all these uh, general skills how did he do the, all that there's so many moments in Caesar's life that are just perfect for TV shows and movies. All this drama, incredible drama in Caesar's life. And they just skip <laughs> over so many of them. And just just uh, the drama fizzles out. But ca casting him uh, is very difficult also. Because uh, we know what a kind of complex person he was. We know actually a lot about him, which I also think is very interesting and amazing like he's around the same time as let's say uh, Jesus Christ for example we know a lot more about Caesar than about Jesus or whether he even existed like from Caesar yes. we know literally like oh he had a receding hairline you don't see that in any of these depictions and he had a quite a sardonic sense of humor and he had these uh, seizures once in a while right. and like there's a whole bunch of things that we know about him uh, but they, like you say, they never really cast him quite right. I, I think like in the Rome series, yeah. I also don't feel like he's really hitting it. You don't feel that? Oh, I love the Rome Caesar. Just love him. Well, he's the best of the bunch, but still like uh, also his face isn't really working for me that much. Like, what's so interesting about these Romans is that they were so good at sculpting these portraits. So for all of them, we have a pretty decent idea what they looked like. We also kind of know what Crassus looked like and what Pompey looked like and so on. And like, okay, I've been thinking a little bit, who would I have liked to see most okay. as a Caesar? Okay. And then with the receding hairline and the wisecracking, because apparently he was quite funny as well. And okay, I'm calling it ideal Caesar would have been uh, Bruce Willis from the 90s. No, I don't like it. Yes. No. Yes. Yes. I don't yes. Like yes. Yippee ki yay, <laughs> motherfucker. No, yes. he's not smart enough. He's not smart enough. <laughs> that would have been awesome. Sorry, uh, listener Bruce uh, Willis. <laughs> okay, who's your who's your ideal uh, Caesar actor then? I don't remember his name, but the actor who plays uh, the HBA Rome, I think he has like the gravitas. You can see that there's a, like that that he's like the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot like m like most of him is like beneath the surface. He reveals just a little bit. You see the passion. There's a lot of uh, like reports about how passionate was uh, Caesar in his personal life, and obviously in his political and military life. And he's very charismatic. Yeah, but Rome series Caesar isn't as uh, wisecracking. He's uh, also I miss the chin. He doesn't have enough chin. Okay. I mean, he's the best of the bunch, but still not quite hitting it for me. So. The, the Netflix uh, Caesar is like, again, soldiery. The TNT Caesar is like very intense and somewhat vapidly ambitious. Like he has this ambition, but never quite articulates, articulates why, what is this ambition. And he has the dream of Rome for the future. Doesn't even say what the dream is. Just like uh, I have 
something that I want to do. And I was watching Pompey. I saw something at that moment. Not just about myself. But about the whole of humankind. How we keep ourselves small. And I realized I have not been inspired. And as I watched Pompey, I saw that he was not inspired. And he would never be inspired. And I realized the difference between Pompey and me. Pompey has merely done something. But I am for something. I need legions. Pompey has them. To listen to the entire episode and catch all our content, look for Pod Academy in quotations on all podcasting platforms.